when we watch pro bike races, it's easy to see just how skinny some of the riders are on the top step of the podium of races like the Tour de France. They are insanely light. And we've almost kind of accepted that this is part of cycling's culture, a necessary way to ride and race our bikes as fast as possible. And during my own time in the sport, I've witnessed how this obsession can be pretty damaging. So much so that we here at GCN decided to make a film titled Weight of the Peloton, which is available to watch on GCN Plus now. And it looked to explore how prevalent eating disorders are in cycling and how potentially damaging that can be on a person's mental well-being and their physical health. It was an eye-opening journey and one which I learned a whole heap about how to have a better relationship with food and also improve my own performance on the bike at the same time. So in this video, I want to list a few things that I learned along the way, which I hope will allow you to have a better relationship with food. And not only that, but also improve your performance on the bike. A really bad habit to fall into is feeling like you need to ride before you get your food in. Or maybe you need to ride harder and further to have larger portions of food or maybe bad food. Another thing I wouldn't advise on, more on that later. Never feel like you only deserve food or certain types of food if you've completed a tough training ride. Instead, you want to really fuel up for what you've got ahead, fueling up for the training ride you've got planned so you can complete it to the best of your ability. That way, you're really able to nail your performance, get every last bit out of you, instead of just riding on empty and kind of creeping around to the end and running out of energy so you knock off a few intervals or don't push yourself as hard as you perhaps would have done. Anorexia athletica, or exercise bulimia, is a disorder which has less to do with body image and more to do with performance. Athletes are particularly susceptible to this as they look to increase their training volume and intensity, whilst at the same time aim to eat increasingly healthy foods to the point where training in their diet becomes obsessive to the point where they, they don't want to miss workouts, you feel restless if you do skip a workout and you kind of prioritize going on rides over than any relationships or responsibilities you may have. And that's something to look out for if you think someone may be suffering from this. It is quite serious because it can cause an electrolyte imbalance, fatigue, and in severe cases, organ failure or heart attack. Now, I'm not saying stop eating salad, but what I'm saying is to do things as part of a well-balanced, rounded diet. No single food on their own, even if it is healthy, is going to be healthy for you. You need to do it and see the whole picture and not fall into the slippery slope, just up in your training, up in your training, and slowly making your food healthier and healthier and healthier to the point where it becomes detriment to your performance and your well-being. Power to weight is not limitless. That is a big lesson I learned when filming the Weight of the Peloton documentary on GCM Plus. In sport, everyone's looking to improve if you're, if you're riding or racing at the highest level. That much is true. And in cycling, one way to improve is to increase your power output or reduce your weight so that your power to weight is as high as it can possibly be. That's the power in watts you produce per kilogram of body weight. The higher that number is, the faster you're gonna go in simple terms. And many people we spoke to when making the documentary fell very easily into the trap of trying to get that number as high as they possibly could simply by reducing their weight. The main trap with working on your watts per kilo and trying to make it as high as possible is that it's easy to fall into the rhythm of just pushing your weight down and getting it as low as possible and keep on working that number down. And all the riders we spoke to who did this actually found that they decreased their performance and they, they didn't have the power that they once had. They just got weaker as a result. The lesson, use a nutritionist if you're trying to lose weight because there is an optimal number. Just going as low as you possibly can won't make you a better rider. If you haven't got access to a nutritionist, I really recommend just working on your power. Try and get as strong as you can possibly be. Trying to manage your weight on top of that by yourself can be a bit too much. In cycling, we hear of plenty of diets. You have the keto diet, the low carb diet, never feel 
I can go without a slice of loaf bread. It's also things like the low res diet and I could go on and I'd be extremely wary of these because orthorexia, a term first coined in 1998, essentially means an obsessive approach to eating healthily and can have some real repercussions on your mental and physical health. Some of the symptoms or signs you may be suffering from this include being really obsessive in checking food labels to make sure you're eating what you think you should eat and also getting really restless or anxious and stressed when you can't eat the foods that are on your diet. Also, having a really narrow view of what you think a healthy diet should be and not diverging from that at all, they're all signs of orthorexia and the physical effects this can have on you, weight loss, mental and physical repercussions and also malnutrition. So if you feel like you never have a cookie, for example, in the day, it's time to think that maybe you're taking things a little too far. One single comment can really affect someone. So just be kind and think about what you're going to say before you talk to a rider or a person, because you never know what someone might be going through and how susceptible they may be to certain comments. Nearly everyone we spoke to when filming way to the peloton had experienced one sort of offhand remark or ill-informed comment which really just set them off on a tough path. And it could have been avoided because the comment wasn't really based in any sort of knowledge or science and it wasn't followed up afterwards. That person was then just left to their own devices. So if you don't have something really well-meaning to say, just shut your mouth. If you're looking at the pros and thinking, I want to get as lightweight as possible, look skinny, ride fast, please think again. For most of the riders we spoke to when filming way to the peloton, when they tried to lose weight, it rarely, rarely translated to an increase in performance. And often, it actually led to years of wasted potential before those riders managed to get things back on track. Instead, most riders are focusing on their punch, their sprint ability, their sheer speed, rather than focusing and obsessing about being lightweight, which to be honest, would only blunt them and reduce their performance in terms of the areas they're actually focusing on. So I hope this video has proved useful to you and saved you from some of the hardship that we encounter when speaking to riders when we filmed Weight of the Peloton. And do let us know in the comments section if you watched that documentary and what you may have learned from it and what you may have learned from this video. I really hope it's helped you. And if you did find it useful, please give it a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.